Hello and welcome to this next video for the transition of Year 11 into A-Level Chemistry. This video is all about some simple chemical reactions that you should learn at GCSE that will be very useful for you to remember for your A-Level Chemistry. We're going to start off with some acid reactions, there's some decomposition reactions, displacement reactions and combustion reactions. And these are just some basic reactions that you learn at GCSE, so it would be good to know them in A-Level because they come up all the time and you're expected to remember them. And they're transferable, so if you know how one metal reacts with one acid, then you can transfer it to any metal and any acid. So I'm just going to give basic ones at the beginning, and then I'll give examples at the end of the video. Okay, so let's start with that one. Why not? Metal plus acid makes salt and hydrogen. So a salt is an ionic compound. It's formed from the metal and the anion in the acid. So if it was magnesium and hydrochloric acid, you'd get magnesium chloride as your salt and hydrogen gas. If you react a base with an acid, then you get salt and water. And if that base was a carbonate, then you get carbon dioxide in addition to that. Your bases are metal oxides, metal hydroxides, and metal carbonates. So magnesium oxide, magnesium hydroxide, or magnesium carbonate are just examples of those. Interestingly, if you have a non-metal oxide, then that tends to be acidic, so an acid gas. So carbon dioxide dissolves in water to make carbonic acid. Sulfur dioxide dissolves in water to make sulfurous acid, and nitrogen dioxide dissolves in water to make nitric acid. And so metal oxides are basic, non-metal oxides are acidic. Just a quick side note, I think that's interesting. The next one is thermal decomposition of metal carbonate. You learn this at GCSE, especially in the limestone cycle, so calcium carbonate will break down into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. You also learn that it's the same for zinc carbonate and other carbonates. Some of them won't break down because it's too high a temperature for them to break down, but this is the basic reaction if they do decompose under heat. And then there's some basic combustion reactions. I'll do the metal one first. Again, there are other things which affect the rate of this reaction. So for instance, iron metal as a lump doesn't combust. It oxidizes to make iron oxide. But if you've got it as iron filings, like really high surface area, then it will burn much quicker. Things like magnesium will burn in oxygen to make magnesium oxide. But this is the basic reaction that I'm trying to show you. And the final one is if you have any hydrocarbon, or for lack of a better word, carbohydrate. That is, hydrocarbons are just hydrogen and carbon. Carbohydrate is what I'm calling anything that's got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And those produce only two products, carbon dioxide and water. And that makes a lot of sense to me. The hydrogen in the hydrocarbon reacts with oxygen to make water and the carbon in the hydrocarbon reacts with oxygen to make carbon dioxide. Now it's also true if you have impurities of nitrogen, you get nitrogen oxides. There's a few different types, but we just call them nitrogen oxides in general. And if you've got sulfur in there, it makes sulfur dioxide. So basically they just combine with the oxygen. Each element combines with the oxygen to make that oxide. So hydrogen oxide, we call that water, carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxides, sulfur dioxide. And actually that's the same for the metal, you just get the metal oxide. Now to finish off this video, I'm going to just do a few examples and show you how to balance them. Because balancing equations are also something you're expected to be able to do at A-level chemistry. Now, I've already done quite a lot of chemistry before I even started balancing this equation. Magnesium is the metal, so you just write it as Mg. Hydrochloric acid is HCl, it's H plus, Cl minus, when it's aqueous. Magnesium chloride uses stuff from the first video, so magnesium is a 2 plus ion because it's in group 2. Chloride is a 1 minus ion because it's in group 7, and so you need two chlorides for each magnesium. And then hydrogen, H2, because they make one covalent bond each, so it's H2. To balance it, you need to make sure that the atoms on the left-hand side are the same as the atoms on the right-hand side. So we've got three different elements. Magnesium, there's one of each on both sides, so that's balanced already. Hydrogen and chlorine, though, there's one of each on this side, and then two hydrogens and two chlorines on this side. So that makes sense that you need two HCl. And now that's balanced. Okay, the next one is a metal carbonate plus acid reaction. So this is sodium carbonate. Notice it's Na2 because sodium is one plus carbonate, two minus. HNO3, again NO3, one minus. H plus, one plus. To make sodium nitrate, and they're both one, so one plus and one minus means you need one of each. Water carbon dioxide because it's an acid plus metal carbonate reaction. There's a few problems here. We'll start just at the beginning because sodium is two on that side and then one on this side. So we need two on this side. I'm also going to follow this through logically. 
Putting a two there means that now the nitrates don't balance. So I've got two nitrates on this side, one on that side. So I need a two here. Note there that I treated the complex ion all together. So I didn't split it into nitrogen and oxygen because it makes things more complicated. If the nitrate stays as nitrate, then just leave it as nitrate and basically treat nitrate like it's one thing. And this now I think should balance. So I've got two sodiums, two sodiums, a CO3, which splits into an O and a CO2. That's how I think about that. And then two H's, which are these two H's, and then two nitrates, which are those two nitrates. Okay, this next one I've made it a little bit more difficult. I've used iron three chloride. Iron is a transition element, and you'll learn about this when you do A-level chemistry, but iron can make two different ions, so a two plus ion and a three plus ion. I've used the three plus because it makes things more difficult. Magnesium is just put in there as a metal. Now a metal displacement reaction would be magnesium, because it's more reactive than iron, taking the place of iron in that salt. So you'd get magnesium chloride and iron as a metal. So you can see the metals there have just swapped. So the magnesium is now in the salt and iron is a pure metal. To balance this, our major problem is going to be the chlorines. The iron, I can put whatever number there I want, and so it's not difficult to balance. The same with the magnesium. However many magnesiums I need, I'll just put the number there and that'll balance itself nicely. The problem is going to be the chlorines, and so to make these equal on both sides, I need to times this side by two and this side by three. So basically I'm using a lowest common multiple, if that's what that's called for maths. And once the chlorines are balanced, the metals are quite easy. As I said, I need two ions, because there's two ions there, and then three magnesiums, because there's three magnesiums here. This one's pretty simple. Zinc carbonate, when you heat it, will break down into zinc oxide and carbon dioxide, and that is already balanced. And last thing I need to talk about combustion, I'll do the metal combustion first, because it's easier. So sodium and oxygen make sodium oxide. Now the sodium is one plus because it's in group one, oxygen two minus, and so I need two sodiums for every oxygen. Balancing is quite easy because these are elements on this side, and so the same as with these metals, it's really easy to balance them because you can just put whatever number you want there. Whereas if they're in a compound, then you affect something else when you put the number in. So deal with compounds first, and then elements at the end. Here my problem is that I've got two O's and then one O, so I need two on this side to make the same. That gives me four sodiums, but that's easy to deal with because just put a four at the beginning of the sodium. What I'm gonna deal with last is probably the most difficult type of balancing equations, which is combustion of hydrocarbons. So as we said, any hydrocarbon will burn to make carbon dioxide and water when it's completely combusted. And it's not much more complicated, and if you follow these steps, then it's not really that complicated at all. Just remember that it's okay to put a fraction into a balanced symbol equation. A lot of time, actually, in A-level chemistry, you don't have a choice, you have to use fractions. If you just follow these steps, you can balance any hydrocarbon combustion reaction. So, however many carbons there are, you have to have that many carbon dioxides. However many hydrogens there are, you need to have half that many waters. And then to finish it off, you add up the oxygens on this side, so six and four, which is 10, so I need five O2s. Now this is just a bit of fun if you like maths. You can do it with any hydrocarbon by just putting in CX, so how many atoms there are of carbon, that's X. How many atoms of hydrogen is Y. You can balance it because you just follow the same rules. Remember, however many carbons there are, that's how many carbon dioxides you get. And however many hydrogens there are, you get half that number of waters. Now to work out this last number, I did this. XCO2 would give me XO2, so X, and then half of this number, because each water has one, and over here I've got O2, so I need half the number of waters worth of oxygens. So half of Y over two is Y over four. So if I just check that using the equation that we used above, X is three and Y is eight, so three plus eight over four is five. So the answer there is five. As I said, that's just a bit of algebraic what I find fun. Um, if you're good at maths, then by all means, enjoy. Otherwise, you just need to be able to balance it the way I did to begin with. Okay, and that is everything for simple chemical reactions. Make sure that you've learned all those chemical reactions. I think there was five, and you know how to write balanced simple equations for them. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something about A-level chemistry. I'll see you in the next one.